It's time for a holiday edition of Donovan Live. Thanks for joining us. I'm Danielle Serino in for Jimmy tonight. Now, if you have plans to end your holiday weekend outside, you will want to listen in tonight. Betsy says there are some storms expected to roll in. And speaking of storms, you never know when they'll wreak havoc on your home. We have a three step process to seal up your house before it's too late. Plus, she's only 18, but on her way to serving your next gourmet meal. Find out how one Lorraine woman got the culinary chance of a lifetime. Donovan Live starts right now. All right, we start tonight with a quick check of your holiday forecast. Let's turn things over to Betsy. I love now that I'm almost as tall as you. Well, you know, a little box will do a big thing for you. <laughs> she I, gained six inches just walking over it's here. Awesome. So we got some storms, right? Yeah, there's some storms mm -hmm. out to the west of us. Erie and Huron County still under a severe thunderstorm. Watch at this hour. And as we take a look at the bigger picture, Cedar Point in line to get some stormy weather. Toledo is right now under a severe thunderstorm warning as this line of storms formed in no time flat. It will continue continue to move to the southeast and as it does so you can see these yellow watch boxes that's the severe thunderstorm watch Toledo as I mentioned under a severe thunderstorm warning right now that does continue down toward Bowling Green I think it stays just north of Bowling Green though but there's another storm out here in defiance that's headed toward Falcon territory then once you get out over the lake you can see there's more storms bubbling up but remember this going to take some time for it to settle to the southeast into much of northern Ohio but for the most part uh, it's basically our western two counties that have the heads up first. That would be Erie and Huron counties. And we just so happen to have Cedar Point sitting out there where the dragster cam that looks northwest is showing rather ominous skies in the distance, but we really can't see any outlines of clouds or whatnot. Some of the pictures that are coming out of the Toledo area are a little uh, disturbing only because it's looking scary. Remember, scary looking clouds are just scary looking clouds. It doesn't necessarily mean anything uh, terrible is about to happen. But we do have a severe thunderstorm watch that uh, continues through 11 o'clock. That's only for Erie and Huron counties so far. We are being monitored for an additional watch a little bit. Maybe that'll be coming out in the next hour or two. There's the storms, 9 p.m., and they'll continue to march to the southeast, making it into the greater Cleveland area after 9, and then continuing on toward the midnight hour. Now you can see that uh, there's a lot of rain in here, but what I am not seeing is a very defined severe weather signature. That being said, we already have a lot of wind in the area, and when you bring in these types of thunderstorms, that can propel that wind even faster. So it's a high wind threat with these storms as they continue to move through the area. We'll hold on to some rain chances for the morning commute tomorrow, but more likely than not, the thunderstorms will be out of the area, and it's just showers that we have to contend with. So really, we are on storm watch, even though we are not under a specific severe thunderstorm watch, Yet, we'll be keeping an eye on things as we head toward the midnight hour. I'll keep everybody updated on Facebook and Twitter, of course. You can follow me at Betsy Kling. And then as the night goes on, we'll be back again at 11. But I'll be back here in just a couple minutes with you, Danielle. All right, Betsy. Now to the other stories from today, including the ongoing backlash after the Browns players' protest and growing tensions between the U.S. and North Korea. It's all in tonight's 77 Seconds at 7. Stowe police tell us they picked up a man on Meadowbrook Boulevard last night after he was banging on people's doors asking for things. They tried taking him to the Haven of Rest homeless shelter in Akron, but that's when they say he became aggressive. Police called for backup, but by the time they arrived, an officer had shot and killed the man. Tonight, that officer is on paid leave. A ride operator at one of Northeast Ohio's biggest fairs of the year is still employed after being arrested for allegedly groping a 15-year-old. Youngstown's WFMJ reports Jose Eduardo Moreno Benitez was able to keep his job at the Canfield Fair because the fair company itself posted his $750 bond. His abusive use of missiles and his nuclear threats show that he is begging for war. The UN is doubling down on North Korea today after it announced yesterday it had successfully tested a hydrogen bomb. In an emergency meeting, Ambassador Nikki Haley urged them to exhaust all diplomatic means before it's too late. There's mixed emotion within the Cleveland Police Department tonight about Sunday's Browns game. Over the weekend, Police Union President Steve Loomis said his staff would not hold the flag for the season opener. But today, Chief Calvin Williams says it will be business as usual. 
From the best and worst credit cards to how to fight your property taxes, it's time for One for the Money. Did you know Ohio has the 12th highest property tax rates in the country? Yep, but here are some tips for getting them down. First, check the value your county has placed on your property. The National Taxpayers Union says 30 to 60% of property is overvalued by local government. And you can often find that information online. If your taxes seem too high, contact your local assessor's office and find out how they came up with that number. It could be from outdated information. If you want to appeal, make sure your information is correct. Your lot measurement, square footage, and age of your home. Also, arm yourself with recent sales in your area as a comparison. Your ultimate weapon, though, is an appraisal. That'll cost a few hundred, but it could save you thousands in the end. Now, no matter what those taxes cost, never pay them with a credit card unless you pay your balance off in full. But for buying things, the cards that consumers are the happiest with, according to a J.D. Power survey, American Express, Discover, and Capital One. At the bottom of that list, Credit One Bank. And when it comes to store cards, a creditcards.com survey says the ones you want to stay away from because they have the worst interest rates are Big Lots, Staples, and TJ Maxx. So again, if you don't pay off the balances every month, don't bother with them. Now, you also said you wanted to hear, back, uh, hear about what not to do if your smartphone gets wet. I'll post that later on my One for the Money Facebook page and Twitter account. And here's another one for the money. As the people in Houston start returning to their homes, it's a good reminder to do everything you can to protect your home from wet weather. Here are a few tips that won't prevent floodwaters, but will save you from some expensive cleanup. There's no way to keep a home dry in five feet of rain, period. And storms today are getting stronger. But even a mild weather system can cause water damage Yet homeowners may not even know they have a problem. We try to tell homeowners it's the water you can't see that causes the most damage. Uh, when your basement leaks, it does, doesn't decide to leak one day. There's a lot of early warning signs, such as just dampness in the basement or a musty odor, um, cracks on the walls or floor, uh, more, again, some kind of discoloration on the walls white powder on the walls. Bryant recommends homeowners take every precaution possible. Obviously, make sure your sump pump is working. Install a battery backup or generator for the sump pumps. Have wide trenches or French drains dug in the basement that run into the sump pump. And of course, look for those early warning signs of leakage. Make sure all gutters are clear and running well away from the home. And if you don't have a basement, make sure the land around your home is well graded away from the slab foundation. As for cost, it can run anywhere from $2,000 for just a sump pump to up to $30,000 for foundation repair, battery backups, and digging trenches and drains. Bryant said his business has jumped 50% in the last five years due to heavier rainfalls and more concerns from consumers about what a damp house does to air quality. He also points to new construction. It's the newer homes, I would say, post-1980, that leak faster. The reason why is just they were built quicker. So how do you choose a waterproofing company? Well, look around for one that's been around for a while. Many of them offer long-term warranties, so you want to make sure the company is still around if the water comes in again. And of course, that's one for the money. Now, happening at this moment, the first official prayer service to welcome Cleveland's new bishop just wrapped up. It's the first order of business before his installment tomorrow. Let's go live to Don Kendrick, who just witnessed history. There is something special stirring in the air here tonight. As Catholics, we believe it's the Holy Spirit stirring with promise and possibility as we usher in a new era, a historic era for the Diocese of Cleveland in officially welcoming and installing Bishop Nelson Perez. The pews were absolutely packed at Cleveland's iconic St. John's Cathedral for evening vespers on the eve of the installment of Bishop, Bishop Nelson Perez. He is the Cleveland Diocese 11th Bishop. He is our first ever Hispanic Bishop. And this is a big deal, truly. You could feel it inside. Tonight's solemn prayer service was Archbishop Christophe Pierre was there as well. Uh, and, and he is essentially the the connection between the Vatican and the United States, the ambassador, if you will.
as well as bishops from several states and also awesome people like the two sisters Carol we're calling them. One is a sister of Notre Dame, the other of the Incarnate Word, and each of the sister Carols have been in the Cle Cleveland Diocese now just a few years short of how long Bishop Perez has actually been alive, 56 years he is. Uh, so by they, these two who have been here, like I say, nearly 50 years, they are absolutely energized by this installment. I would say he, he'll be a bishop for all people. I'm very interested in um, immigration, the cause of immigration and social justice myself. So I hope that he'll be able to do a lot for Cleveland and the social problems that we have. It's not my celebration. It is the celebration of the Church of Cleveland and these eight counties that compose this local church. Uh, it's, it's our celebration, the whole church in this area. Let's thank this installation committee. Some are here, some are in the background. Thank them. Oh, I would say it will bring new life to the diocese. We are very excited. Perez, when he was in interviewing with Russ Mitchell, shook his hand. He seems like such a great guy. And this is a guy who's a scuba diver. There's a lot of things that we don't really know yet about him, and we're going to bring you more of those details and why he is already so beloved tonight on Channel 3 News at 11. For now, I'm Dawn Kendrick reporting live from St. John's Cathedral, Channel 3 News. All right, Dawn, thanks. Definitely some exciting times for Cleveland and the Hispanic community. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Channel 3 News at 7, Donovan Live is made possible by Adventure Auto Group, where you can get real deals from real people. We're back and featuring a, just stop right now, a local woman with budding potential. Last week, Betsy and Jimmy had the chance to meet an 18-year-old <laughs> from Lorraine. Do you want me to go stand over here? Look. <laughs> oh, Daniel. <laughs> mm-hmm. The woman won a national competition, a cooking competition, which is pretty impressive for a teenager to win nationally. Yes. And you spoke to her. I did. She's amazing. She made airline chicken for us. And honestly, I didn't know what airline chicken was. I thought it was just the rubbery kind of right. chicken you used to get on the thinking. This is a whole new level. She's amazing, not only with her cooking skills, but she's got a great personality to boot. All right, let's check it. We're in the kitchen tonight. A Lorraine 18 year old is the recent winner of a scholarship from a national culinary arts competition where she worked for five hours to perfect her dish. And now Julia Spondike joins us to show us that dish and explains how she got here. Yes, sir. Welcome. Thank you. And Thank she joins you. Betsy and I. What is uh -huh. the dish? Um, so you, right here, I have the a chicken entree that I did for one of the four main dishes that I did in my competition. Oh, this okay. was the first entree that I did and then okay. I also did a braised chicken entree for my second piece because the competition you had to utilize an entire chicken yeah so I had to break it down I had to make a stock and a soup and I also did a salad and then two of the entrees which one you see here <laughs> all right tell us about the scholarship mm -hmm. uh, I have a, um, a full tuition scholarship oh, to the Kone Institute Whoa, of America yeah. so I'll be nobody leaving. mom and dad are thrilled by that I'll tell you that <laughs> go ahead tell us so, so I'll be leaving in October have everything set and ready to go I'm very excited what got you the food? Wow, a lot of things. Definitely probably um, one of the first things was uh, when my dad would tell me stories about my grandmother's being in the kitchen oh, and cooking because so I come from an Italian family. See, I'm telling you, you <laughs> how many times have we had people on in there? It's grandmother the was the kid. Yeah, yeah, it's all, that's right. <laughs> right. And so that's what happened, Yeah, huh? definitely. And also, uh, Julia Child is a big inspiration. Julia <laughs> Child? Oh, we should, we should I used to watch name, Julia so. Child. Did you watch <laughs> Julia Child? I love yeah. Julia Child. Yeah. Did you ever see that movie where, who was it, Amy Adams was yes, in it? Yes, that's probably all one right. of my favorite movies. <laughs> what do you want to, and you work now, right? Right, I okay. do. I work at Cole's Public Give House. Give your place a nice um, plug. Downtown Cole's. Amherst. Love you, Chef Robbie. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, they, we just recently opened up uh, Cole's Public House in Cork Tree Tavern. It's a uh, kind of higher-end Italian food. This is so. like an all-American dish, though, isn't yes, it? Sir. I mean, really? Yeah, huh? classic, you know, basic French cooking with the airline chicken breast, some nice seasonal veggies, and some brown rice peel off. so you got that healthy healthy in there. Now, do you think entrees is your specialty, your specialty yeah. or what's your Everybody specialty? Everybody asks me that and I always say chicken because that's what I've worked with the most and um, I actually get teased about it a lot at work because we have this thing where we go, ah, chicken, if we mess yeah. up on or anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us about your gravy real quick. All right, so what I'm going to do is yeah. what I have is basically a chicken velouté, which is a thickened chicken stock. Mm -hmm. And all we're going to do here is add some heavy cream mm. and some herbs. 
I have basil, parsley, and chives. Right. And usually I would use tarragon, but um, think we keep it simple sure. for, you know, some chives in there here. There you go. Beautiful. Parsley, about a tablespoon of each. Do you come up with your own recipes? Actually, for this, this is um, very basic in uh, classical French cooking. So mm. this is what came from my competition. Well, That's congratulations. Really Thank you. And we're really proud of you. Absolutely. And I know everyone is. I and have a it. great time. Oh, my goodness. In New yeah. York City. Would you stay in New York or are you going to come back home? Um, I don't think I'm going to stay in New York. I'm probably going to work for a couple of years. It's not actually in New York City. It's in Hyde Park. Right. So it's about two hours north. All right. I'm definitely okay. very excited. All right. Huh? Very cool. And Congratulations let me tell you, it to is, you. And it smells delicious. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Thanks for coming in tonight. Yeah. She is too cute. All right. Next up, Betsy will update us on the location of those storms. Welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed your holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. Yesterday actually was a very nice day. It turned out to be later in the day. It wasn't too bad I, I later. Was, yeah. I was laying out. Mm -hmm. Today, obviously spectacular, mm -hmm. but it's going to go down the yeah. tube slowly. 88 in downtown Cleveland, the high temperature today. Very dry air in place, but that is changing moment by moment. As you step outside, temperatures are cooling and we have more moisture coming in. There's a current look at the radar and our counties, our viewing area are dry, but you can see the thunderstorms are not that far away and they are continuing to progress to the southeast. Now, what we've been watching through the day is a process where we've had a lot of moisture moving in. We started the day about five o'clock, four o'clock. We had 33% relative humidity in downtown Cleveland. Now it's up to almost 40% or excuse me, 50% relative humidity. That's how much moisture is in the air relative to how much moisture the air could hold. So it's basically the glass analogy. The glass is half full in downtown Cleveland, or instead of half empty. But we have about 70% fullness down in the Dover area. But another measure of humidity is the dew point. And dew point is an absolute measure. There's no relative anything. It's just a temperature. And at this temperature, dew was...